Um, all right, our next speaker, Daniel Aaron. Uh, Daniel Aaron came to Ubud eight years ago uh, from the United States, and he's lived, lived all over. In fact, Ubud, he says, is the place he's lived the longest in his entire life, so that's kind of a unique thing. Um, Daniel's been studying yoga, or teaching yoga for 16 years, been studying yoga for a long time, is famous in Ubud for running some really amazing teacher trainings, and a year ago opened up his own, own yoga studio called Radiantly Live, right across the street from Bali Buddha, uh, a, a, great, a great yoga center, very central. Uh, and Daniel, uh, <laughs> it's good I have at least some people who laugh at my jokes. Um, and Daniel's gonna be talking about radical intimacy and authenticity, honesty plus. Daniel Aaron. Ready? It's going to start any time. Is there, right? Oh, okay. So, if honesty is the best policy, why do we all lie? <clears throat> One reason is we're good people and we don't want to hurt each other. Another, if people really knew what was going on in our minds, it would be a bit scary. And we probably haven't had the best models for it. It's a huge topic. I'm going to see what I can get covered in just a little bit here. This is a picture of the sweater my mother received in 1975 for her birthday from her friend Brenda. And when she received it, she said, oh, it's so beautiful. What a beautiful sweater. Thank you. Um, this is the sweater that Brenda gave her the next year. You know, and I know what my mother was doing there. She, was, she wanted to express her gratitude. She wanted Brenda to appreciate that. Understandable. Um, the thing is, when we don't tell the truth, okay, we can get in trouble, you know, we can screw things up. We also kind of don't get what we want in our own lives. And it doesn't work, right? Micro expressions, you all know this, I'm sure. The little flash that comes across our face when what's really going on, we, even when we try and hide it, it comes out anyway. Right? Um, Another one, uh, body language, right? When the finger's going one way and the eyes are going the other way, that's a clear sign that what's on the inside is not matching what's being expressed. As in, I did not have sexual relations with it. Right? We all knew that he was lying. So along comes this guy, Brad Blanton, who wrote a book called Radical Honesty, How Telling the Truth Will Change Your Life. And he advocates complete unedited honesty all the time, and if somebody else gets hurt, hurt that's their problem, right? Uh, I think we can do better than that, and we'll get to that in a second. But keep in mind, what Brad Blanton was doing is offering a course correction. He's saying, um, we've gotten a bit lame, a bit tame, we're afraid of being honest, we're afraid of hurting each other. So he's saying, we need to do something different, but that can go too far too. So imagine a world where nobody ever lies and nobody cares what anyone else thinks, right? Ricky Gervais in this film has a blind date and on the blind date, his date receives a phone call and um, she said, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm with him now. No, um, yeah, kind of fat. Um, <laughs> no, I won't be sleeping with him tonight. <clears throat> so, you know, honesty can go a bit too far. What feedback can be something that's really amazing and helpful, but it can turn into feed forward, which is just a b dumping of negativity towards someone else. So what are we to do? Lying doesn't work, not telling the truth doesn't work, but radical honesty also doesn't work so well. So what we need to do, on the one hand, actually care about each other. On the other hand, be honest and have a commitment to it. And to do that, we have to be courageous. We have to be willing to say the truth and to face up to our own insecurities and fears. <clears throat> I lived at a uh, human potential center once and they had rules for dating. Rule number one, always go for your first choice. Right. 
which for me was a fairly scary thing. It meant really opening myself up to rejection. <clears throat> and you know, that well, the word next one is even worse. Rule number two, if somebody says no, ask them why. <clears throat> which, which, you know, if we're lucky, it, it's not about us. And so, you know, she says, uh, I'm married, or I just got out of a relationship with a weirdo yoga dude, so. Um, <laughs> but on the other hand, maybe it is about us. Maybe she says to me, well, you're fat, or you're ugly, or you have bad breath. And sometimes the truth does hurt. But we can take it, right? And the great thing about the truth is it feels right. It's congruent. And then it gives us a choice. Then we can do something about it. As in, well, maybe I want to watch what I eat or brush my teeth more often. I get a choice about it. And sometimes the hardest things to hear are the things that are most valuable for us. I was in a relationship a few years ago. And the woman I was with uh, looked at me once. And she was crying and she's telling me how my sarcasm hurt her. <clears throat> this was not a fun moment for me. I felt like a jerk, an asshole, and I felt horrible. And I also felt really frustrated. Like, I didn't really know how to relate to her differently. I didn't know how to tell the truth. Religion tries to make it simple, right? Commandments, rules. But in reality, they end up conflicting. It's, it's not so simple. The bottom line is honesty is challenging. Us yogi types, we like to do weird stuff, right? Like put our foot behind our head or stand on our hands. Um, though in my experience, honesty and caring at the same time is way harder than any of the physical yoga stuff. And it's also way more valuable. So how do we do it? On the one hand, we feel the people that we love, that we care about, and we feel how our words will affect them. And on the other hand, we have a commitment to honesty. And somehow, those two things together produce words. I don't know what they are. Personally, I get scared, I get shaky anytime my commitment to truth means that I'm gonna say something that might be scary for me, it might be hard for somebody to hear. Though I like the saying that anything worth doing is worth doing badly at first. So sometimes we make a mess, yet we learn. I'm inspired about this because it's made a big difference in my life. I feel freer, I feel happier, I feel like people trust me. And in the words of the singer Ani DeFranco, the world owes us nothing, we owe each other the world. Thank you all.